Hi, uh, my name is Abhishek Paliwal. I am a current graduate student of University of Florida. Um, I am going to represent a emo emotion recognition project under the course of pattern recognition of EEL 6825. So I am going to give you the outline of this presentation and the uh, demo. So in this outline, first of all, is going to explain what is emotion recognition, what are its application, what kind of a database I've been using and what kind of a certain techniques or the methodologies I've been using. And um, after that, I'm going to give you a computer program demo on which how the program is running with using the um, uh, existing database of its uh, pre-processing and uh, what the uses of the neural networks and how its implementation. And uh, after that, I'm going to give you the performance evaluation showing the accuracy and the losses of the model on with the number of epochs and uh, I'm giving the confusion metrics also. In the last conclusion has been drawn like uh, what kind of things that have we, uh, can be done to improve its accuracy. Okay, so going forward, what is emotion recognition? Emotion recognition uh, is uh, is a process of identifying the human emotions. As we all know, the human beings are the most intelligent species on the planet, having an extraordinary capability. One of which is to differentiate and identify individuals from one another by looking at their faces. Identifying humans are playing an important role in our day-to-day -day life in terms of interaction, communication, other routine activities. Uh, differentiating and understanding emotion from person plays a very vital role to make a, a very seamless interaction and, a and to build up uh, your communications more. Then, uh, why is emotion recognition? Um, as we all know that a human to human communication is very much easy because uh, humans can easily identify the um, emotion of that uh, other person. But uh, we are trying to build up a machine that can understand the human emotion by just looking at their faces. So by doing this, we can increase the communication between the machine and the human human uh, human beings. So what are its applications? So applications can be found a uh, number of ways. Like first of all, in the medical sector, or you can say medicines, a rehabilitation. Like uh, it helps in monitoring the patients whether they are feeling sad or happy or angry. So these kinds of things is very helpful to understand the doctors to what kind of uh, further prescriptions or the steps they they need to take to improve the quality life uh, of the patients. Okay, in the next, uh, another application we can use in the e-learning, adjust the presentation style of an online tutor by detecting the state of the learner. It's by um, by meaning the state, it's just by understanding the the person who is going to learn. Like uh, by looking at the material, like whether uh, that person is feeling sad, bored, excited. So these kinds of things uh, helps the online tutors to improve their presentation styles. And uh, in the last, like a uh, uh, car driving, so uh, autonomous uh, car driving is is very booming right now in the nature. And detecting the state of uh, state of the person who is driving the car is very much crucial also, because uh, if that person is not feeling very good, so we can alert the nearby cars to keep that keep uh, safe distance, so we can avoid any unnecessary accidents. So in this project, I've been using the database for 2013. So in this, I have uh, given you the sample of how the sample raw data uh, has been presented. It consists of three columns. First column is the emotions, which are the true labels. The second column are the pixels. Uh, these are the string of the pixels of a one image and the usage. A uh, usage is uh, consist of uh, like a uh, which kind of image can be used in which kind of scenario. It means that like um, so, um, as you can see in the image like uh, these are images right now is being used in the training sets and uh, there's another two sets also which can be used like uh, the validation and the testing set. Uh, we are going to explore further uh, later on. So right now a total number of images in that database is 35,000 or 887 or you can say the rows number of rows. <laughs> So uh, there are seven categories of emotion can be found in this database surprise, happiness, fear, anger, sadness, disgust and neutral. So after the uh, pre-processing has been done on these images, these string of pixels values are going to be converted into a 48 by 48 matrix for each image and the sample of images have been um, represented here. As you can all see it's a grayscale images and with a frontal view. 
so we don't need to uh, further do any kind of a padding elongation so nothing can be required so it's uh, very much a very good shape once the uh, methodology so after that uh, the pre-processing has been done the methodology has been introduced like um, what kind of models we need to choose so in this project like I have been working on the four different types of models and and by uh, going with the you know um, looking at their performance we can select the best foundation to work on uh, in these four models the three are the neural networks and one is a decision tree to make the model training faster we exploited the GPU accelerated uh, deep learning facilities on torch or for the neural networks so that we don't need to waste uh, one hour two hour it can be done very fast by using the GPUs S and the decision tree was implemented using the scikit learn so as you as I have already explained uh, the first model is a decision tree that have been implemented the second one is a simple feed forward neural network and third one is a convolution neural network and the last one is the complex or a uh, proposed convolutional neural networks going forward with the decision tree so what's the reason for choosing a decision tree it's easy to implement and it can be applied to almost all types of the data and uh, the as you can see in the images the last stage of the classification of the uh, decision tree results in a decision nodes and the leaf nodes so in the last um, nodes can be uh, assumed as like uh, these are the seven categories of the emotions so by implementing the decision tree in the existing database we get a accuracy of 0 0.309 which is very low as compared to the standard so that's why we we are moved towards the neural network so at first we implemented a simple neural uh, feed forward neural network uh, it consists of uh, an input layer single hidden layer and output layer hidden layer use a uh, relu activation function and output layer use a soft uh, softmax activation function so the parameters have been passed here are the uh, kept as a learning rate as a 0 0.01 the number of epochs 30 has been used with the best size of 128 uh, as you can see the, uh, the accuracy is not so great is a 0.1738 so it's just similar to the linear regression because we are just using uh, the single hidden layer so the uh, we all know that a basic view forward is not going to give us any good results for the image classification for the image classification convolution is going to give us the better results so that's why we move forward with the basic convolutional neural network so in this basic convolutional neural network we have just two dimensional convolutional layers and uh, followed by a two dimensional max pooling layer and then by a two fully connected layers so as you can see in the architecture first of all the convolution layer has been implemented then the relu activation function then again the convolution layer then the relu and the max rule the reason for using a dropout is that it reduces the overfitting like um, model is not going to overfit if we use the uh, dropouts it's reduced that possibilities so the but uh, we are facing the basic issue with the CNN that instead of predicting the angry the model predicted happy for all the inputs the reason for that is that in the training data set we have most of the inputs are um, labeled as the happy so that's why like uh, whenever the uh, test image has been processed by this convolutional neural network model so um, it are only going to predict happy so that's why we are going to need more deeper network so as we are going to move forward by observing the results of the basic CNN architecture there is a need of a more hidden layer means more deeper network is required to make models learn from the images so that's the reason we are going to go into more deep so as compared with the previous uh, CNN it um, the proposed uh, CNN is it has four more convolutional layers with a different filter size means uh, by looking at the architecture it has a six two dimensional convolutional layers two max pooling layers and two fully connected layers like uh, the reason for adding more layers it it's because it helps in uh, it helps the model to prevent from memorization and also allow them to generalize the generalize the whole thing so uh, right now I'm going to give you the demo of this so in this demo as you can see in the code like we have a one main file second one is a pre-processing of the data and the third one is the model 
configuration so right now i have already started a, a model to so that it can already it because it's going to take some more time so as you can see in the uh, model like uh, we have a different kind of uh, training testing validation and uh, all kinds of data has been presented here and the model has been as you can see the losses are uh, reducing rapidly with each epoch and with each batch size and the accuracy is going is increasing uh, by this manner so in the in the end um, and the one important thing I am going to mention is also that we are also putting the validation data with the training side so that with each epoch uh, the model is going to compare the training data set with the validation too so that it can give you the uh, this accuracy so as you can all see the model has uh, finished his training and we got the final loss of 0.0844 with the accuracy of 0.9728 this accuracy is based on the training data set and we have also con uh, we have also find the parameters of a validation losses and the validation accuracy so in the end um, i'm going to give you the performance evaluation how the accuracy and the its loss has been working by giving you the graphs so in the this graphs with each epoch you can see that uh, the accuracy are increasing and it become steady after the 20 epochs and um, for the validation it's just um, become steady after the five epochs also only but model requires more epochs to just to become uh, to avoid ki any kind of overfitting so in the in the same case the losses are also going to become steady after the 20 epochs but the losses for the validation is are keep on increasing after the seventh or eighth epochs which is not a very good sign so that's why like uh, we are going to reduce the batch size so that it can give us the better performance and in in the last once the uh, all the uh, validation and the testing has been done and um, training has been done then we are going to check on the testing phases so by uh, checking on the testing phase uh, we are going to get this kind of a confusion matrix as you can see uh, the happy uh, the happy emotion is dominating in all kind of a seven categories the reason is that because in the training uh, in the training data sets the happy faces are more as compared to the other as as you can also see that in the surprised categories are also more as compared to the other so um, as in the left side you can also see that uh, more than point eight percent like uh, it's giving you the very good results in identifying the happy and the surprise faces because the model is trained more on these kinds of data other uh, for um, as compared with the other categories so in the last conclusion we can say that uh, the models that we uh, like in the last or we can say the, in the summary the models that we are experimented with include decision tree feed forward neural networks uh, smaller convolution networks before arriving at the proposed model the effects of a different hyperparameters on the final model was then investigated such as changing the number of epochs learning rate and the batch size so the final accuracy of the proposed model is 0 0.60 uh, was achieved during the adam optimizer so this is a this is a very good accuracy the, it's a very state of uh, art accuracy was achieved with the use of a single data set as opposed to the combination of a many data sets as we all know that the data plays a very important role in machine learning applications so we um so more data if we provide more data to the model is going to perform much better so the model demonstrated has used significantly less data for training and a deep but a simple architecture to obtain a good results which is a very good thing for us so the relatively um and uh, one more uh issue that have been faced uh, in this uh, data set is that there is a relatively lower amount of a data for emotions such as discussed make the model have a difficulty of predicting it that's why like it's getting confused between the disgust and the angry so uh, and it having a less number of images in the data set so that's why it's giving us the lower uh, lower accuracy so the more training data will still be retaining the same network structure so if we are uh, get, uh, getting any more data and uh, retaining the same network uh, structure the efficiency of the proposed system will be enhanced considerably 
so this is my final year project on this and I've given you the in the summary also like what are the things that we can do if we get more data on the different kind of categories the model is going to perform very much better um, because right now the uh, architecture is good but the due to the less uh, less amount of data it's uh, giving us the this kind of accuracy so thank you go gators